Scott from Foreign Field Living History here today and I'm going to be telling you how to make a little bit of extra cash if you're a soldier in the First or Second World War. The game is Crown and Anchor. And Crown and Anchor is a Victorian children's board game. You have a board with six bases, four playing card suits, a crown and an anchor. You also have three or more dice that have corresponding symbols for the board. And effectively, it's a guessing game. You're going to guess where the dice will land. So you place your counters on the board, you roll the dice. If your dice, if your section comes up, you win your counter back, and the same again. Now, this game is very quick to learn, very quick to tell the people about. You can explain it, even a child can learn it very quickly. Now, flash forward a few years after the Victorian period to the trenches of the First World War and the barracks and army bases of the Second World War, and perhaps even a bit further back in time to Nelson's Navy. And you see this game being played all over the place. Because if you replace those counters with coins, and those guesses to bets, this goes from a harmless children's game into a soldier's gambling game. And more importantly, a soldier's gambling scam. Now, this is a scam that works like this. As we said, you place your bets, or your mates, or your comrades place their bets. And when you're playing it as a children's game, the, you take it in turns being the banker, and the banker takes off the excess coins, the ones that the dice don't come up for. When you're playing it in a war, whoever owns the board stays the banker, and they take off a small amount of excess coins each time every turn, every round, every game. So eventually they can make a very large amount of money off the failed bets of their comrades. And you can earn an awful lot of money doing this. Now, he doesn't say he was running the board, but in Old Soldiers Never Die, uh, Frank Richards describes how he earned or made almost a thousand francs in one single night of playing Crown and Anchor, which is about 40 pounds in English money. There's an awful lot of money to be had playing and running this game. Um, as he also describes how it's very, very popular. He says you can see it in every cafe behind the lines. There'll be soldiers playing Crown and Anchor. And in fact, if you go onto the Imperial War Museum sound archive on their website, there are almost a hundred accounts of soldiers playing or seeing Crown and Anchor being played, including one chap who's very cagey and asks for the microphone to be turned off before he describes how he ran a gang that was playing Crown and Anchor. Now, the gangs worked very similarly to the ones you see on Oxford Street or London Bridge playing Three Card Monty or the Shell Game today. It's never just one person, there is always a gang involved. So you have one person actually playing the game, rolling the dice, moving the coins around, actually managing what's happening on the board. You have another person, the caller, who's shouting out, attracting new customers, attracting new players, new victims, to come in, put more money into the game. Occasionally, we found an account where they would go and buy everyone a round of drinks, get everyone a little bit merrier, a little bit happier, a little bit drunker, and therefore more willing to part with their cash. Using the money from the game, that's their own money. You would also have lookouts keeping an eye out for, say, military policemen, officers, anyone who's going to turn them in. Because this, as well as being a scam, is illegal in and of itself. It's unlicensed gambling. It's illegal in 1915. It's illegal in 1940. It's illegal in 2020. So you're going to keep an eye out for anyone who might turn you in for doing this. Which is why you have a board that you don't mind missing. Ours is painted on a sheet of canvas. There's one in the Imperial War Museum archives that's just drawn out on a sheet of cardboard. There's one that's painted on the inside of a suitcase, anything that can be easily hidden. So you can quickly <gasps> pick it up and run away. So, Kyle appears to have legged it, and with very good reason. Like he said, this is an outright scam, dishonourably taking money, from all of your comrades in arms. And as he's also mentioned, it is illegal. Now, he also mentioned one of the things was that it goes back to the dates of Nelson's Navy, and we've seen evidence of Crown and Anchor boards being 
drawn out on scraps of canvas and scraps of sail, available and easily disposable. And it's because of the Navy that this is incredibly illegal in the Caribbean to the tune of some seriously hefty fines. Because what would happen at the heightened days of the Empire is both the Royal Navy and the Merchant Navy would be pulling into ports such as St Kitts and Barbados and Jamaica and sailors would be getting off and going straight into the market towns and they'll be setting up their tables and their crown and anchor boards and basically fleecing the local populace of as much of their hard-earned money as they could before getting back on ship, reloading and setting out. And this left such a hole in the available money in Barbados that it actually meant that Barbados couldn't function as a normal economy uh, at the time. And therefore legislation had to be passed to ruinously punish the, the use of crown and anchor. And all across the empire it was outlawed. There remains in fact only one place pretty much in the world and in the certainly within the Commonwealth that you can play this legally for money. And that is on Derby Day in Jersey. It's the last Sunday in July. So we've taught you how to play the game. If you want to give it a go, pop over to Jersey. Nice holiday in the Channel Islands. Try your hand at Crown and Anchor. Thanks a lot for joining us. Stay lucky.